Welcome to episode 317 of the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs and Security First IT. And joining me is Donna Grandlove Cart. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, David. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> We're in a hurry. We are in a hurry. <laughs> we have scheduling conflicts going on this morning. Yeah. Busy, busy did. time. That's how I'm doing. I'm, I'm just like a little buzzed. That's, it. <laughs> That's called so coffee. Many ways. <laughs> it's just so many things going on i can't even begin to tell you <clears throat> all, all right. right you ready to roll yeah good deal so thought i would mention um that as this is released it's my birthday <laughs> not just any birthday no it's a it's my fitty fitty <laughs> <laughs> He's 50 years old. 50. Sally like, McNally fans. 50. I know. I man. can kick. I can squat. <laughs> I, know, I look in the mirror. I'm like, darn, you old. <laughs> You're so gray. You're so gray. Uh, and, no. and, you know, I still love it that I don't, everybody accuses me of coloring my hair. No, I do not. I, I have a gray streak now. Yeah. Over here over here i don't know where I, i've just you know i've just come to tell people i would rather it turn gray than turn loose sorry for yeah. all you bald people but i wouldn't look good bald yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some I, people I can do it that just gave up and started shaving his head bald and he ain't he's not even 30 yet he, yeah he I, don't, he I don't even think he's in his late 20s yet <laughs> i can't do the math <laughs> yeah so um so here's here's what you can do if you want to do something for me on my birthday Go and leave us a review. There you go. So, and say, go to, happy birthday, David. Exactly. Well, yeah, but leave us a review. Uh, that would make me happy on my birthday. Yeah, the big <laughs> five O. Uh, so, funny story. Um, went out last night for my birthday early, and we went to <laughs> we went to an escape room. Uh -oh. And the story of the escape room was we were on a, a runaway train. And we had to solve all these clues to, you know, stop the runaway, tra runaway train and get off of it. And <laughs> yeah, no. the, the last few seconds of it, we had too many, I think we had too many um, hands in the pot <laughs> uh <-oh. laughs> because as we were like reading the final instructions on how to um, steer the train from the impending doom of going across a, a bridge that was out. <laughs> <laughs> somebody decided to uh put the um fuses or whatever they were in place which then started this countdown timer <laughs> <laughs> and so then we were in panic mode trying to read all these instructions to figure out how to work these controls that we didn't know what we were doing long story short train crashed we died <laughs> <laughs> and so i told my wife i was like my my 50th birthday so far has been a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a goober. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Ho hope that is not a sign of things to come this year. I know, right? <laughs> I am certainly hoping not. Oh, choo, boy. Choo. I know. Choo, 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 choo. But, uh, and then I think, uh, what, next week, I believe, is the boot camp. So we'll be uh, boot camping. Can't wait to get that done. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to seeing everybody. I know. It'll be exciting. Know. All it's right. the most we've ever had in one camp because we kept going, we'll, we'll, we'll let one more in. Just one more. Just one more. <laughs> we've turned a few away, so. Yeah. I'll be. When nobody offered me double the price, I was kind of disappointed. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's like paying double the price to spend time with us. I don't think anybody wants to do that. <laughs> It's well worth it, I promise. Yeah, we'll auction it off sometime for a change. There you go. All right, we're going to get into the hippo. Say what? Oh, what? my goodness. And do we mean say what? <laughs> it is actually, painful to be. I, told right. a, I actually told a guy that misspelled hippo in an IT forum. I told him this week, I was like, do not misspell it. Because if you do a Google search for it, <laughs> you will find it and it will not be good. <laughs> no, not at all. So you mentioned this thing last week. 
Well, we've been tracking it ever since I saw the really cool little thing that we thought was so funny. <laughs> no, the chart that said this is, you know, one HIPAA and an actual law. The last two lines of the chart are what made the difference. You know, and then hip up a pa, and the, and the thing is, one's an actual law, and one something people made up on the internet, right? Well, well the people on the real. internet do not apparently read the last two lines. <laughs> they see the check marks that make them look right, and it is getting insane with all the internet experts of HIPAA. And and it, it doesn't matter what you do, you're wrong. It you know. It, it people that help write it could try to tell these people and they'd be like, you're lying or you're a troll or you're not a real person. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's, there's a, a, an account called bad HIPAA takes. And, you know, I get out there and, and do social media. I answer questions. I, you know, I try to be helpful to people to have patients understand their rights. That's what a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. Like, this is not HIPAA. This is what you should do. And this, <laughs> it's a, I, uh, I'm not going to go into the name, but it's a, a woman running for Congress <laughs> in New Jersey <laughs> as double down, triple down. Quite, I don't know what you call it. <laughs> it is so bad. Telling not only the bad HIPAA takes account, but several others that tried to explain to her that she was wrong, that they are trolls. They're accusing them of being bots, going nuts. And then there is this thing that you can find in 2013. There was a bill that never got out of committee that had something like uh, health care, patient, privacy, act or something it was a true hip hop -pa, -pa, pa in 2013 it was house resolution something never got out of committee mm -hmm. now they're using that as proof it's a law <laughs> along with the chart and then even went so far to say you could sue people and use <laughs> And they're like, you can't, you can't do that. That's, that's not how it works. And she's telling people her, her uh, followers are like getting on her side, getting on the track. This is how misinformation gets going. Yeah. Because you look at her and you think surely she wouldn't, you know, steer somebody wrong. <laughs> she has some credibility. She's running for public office of some sort. <laughs> But I mean, she is just refusing to even consider she might be wrong <laughs> so much so that she even said she she gave a, a, a picture of of the enforcement news on the HHS website and said, tell HHS you can't you can't do <laughs> something and, you know, sit down and let the adults talk. And I'm like. <laughs> i can't even i can't even and yeah. and thing is she's not the only one they're just going off the deep end over this so please uh be careful out there if you actually understand hipaa yeah it's getting scary just because you say that's not how hipaa works well th this is the same kind of mess we've always dealt with in a different form mm -hmm. it's, it's the always the well, HIPAA is only this. Well, HIPAA is just this. All you got to do is this. It, you know, it's just another form of it. And yeah, it's another know, tell, form of internet experts in something they're not experts in. We have it in everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. I tell yeah. people all the time. IT. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, I, I tell people all the time. Look, you, you really need to have somebody who understands HIPAA that you can talk to because Googling it is not good. Um, nah. I mean, even if you go to government sites, there, you know, there's still information that was out there pre-omnibus because, you know, it's just out there. And so if you don't really look at it and understand what you're looking at, you and I look at it and go, oh, that's the way things used to be. Other people looking yeah. at it going, oh, that's what it is. No, it changed. It's not yeah. that way anymore. But if you don't know that, then, you know, oh, I found it on the actual government website. This is what it says. Yes, but it changed. 
Mm-hmm. Um, gosh, man, I tell you, it, it it is frustrating. However, we're but doing we, our you know, part. We use the old stuff because mm-hmm. we need it sometimes. So it's not like they can get rid of it. Right. Because, you know, you have to know when certain things happen, what applied when. So we need that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because when they find something that happened years and years ago, you got to go, okay, which version does this apply to? <laughs> yeah. But we <sighs> actually read it and not like, you know, as soon as I read the part that says I'm right, I'm done is what they're doing. Yeah. You know, it, it, it you can't start with you are right. And then start go with if blah, 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 because they stop with you are right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is yeah. that. And unfortunately, she'll probably run for whatever seat and, and win. She is running. I mean, she has declared and, and there is a whole campaign site. And I can't wait till she puts on the campaign site that she's a hip hop expert. Uh, I'm sure. So. But then we have another Hepa Say What thing. And uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, I did have to have flashback moments when I wrote, you just can't hide it. <laughs> I remember seeing the Pointer Sisters in the 80s, big hair and all. You were so excited. I, hey, <laughs> you know, back then, uh, you know, I graduated from high school in 81. So it was all about the Pointer Sisters. I knew every word to many of their things. I could never get my little fine hair to be that big, though. Never happened. (laughs) But it made me think, I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. But the problem is, you really can't hide it. You can't hide it. (laughs) If you have a data breach, it's really hard to hide it. And uh, uh, databreaches.net, we read them often. They, you know following many of the things we're following and they interview people and get some great deep down details so we uh we like to get the interviews and stuff they'll actually call people up and say hey we saw this and on the web and they'd be like, i don't know and there is a uh pie p pizza I don't remember how they said this. I'm just going to say P-Y-S-A since it is an acronym. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But they made it like uh, not all caps, but it's for protect your system, amigo. (laughs) It's one of those other uh, gangs been around for a while and they exfiltrate your data and run their ransomware attack. That's called a pizza. (laughs) Pizza. So piece of something something yeah <laughs> keep saying and, more than uh, that <laughs> and so then they have a name and shame site oh yes yeah. nice. so their name and shame site they actually you know put the details out there so you can easily see whose data it is and i mean there are screenshots uh on the dark web of patient records uh bills claims all kinds of things and it has like the logo of the uh, organization on it and they even point out that some of them don't fall under hipaa but still you know depending on the state and some other stuff they they could it's still health information but it doesn't fall under hipaa again everything doesn't work on that way with hipaa Mm -hmm. Um, but they're finding the data out there and it's not reported on the breach website. And they had five examples of them from incidents going back to the beginning of the year. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's not good. Rut row Ruby. Yeah. Rut row Shaggy. Rut row Shaggy. <laughs> what is it? Rut? Never yeah. mind. Rut row. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, you know, for, that's the uh, people that <laughs> are, are the ones that look at you and go, Let's just move forward. Let's not talk yeah. about what happened. Not that you've ever heard that. No, no <laughs> never today. We start asking questions about, tell me again what happened in 2019. Um, yeah, and I don't get where I'm like, I just, I don't talk about it. Don't, let's, uh, yeah, get your attorney. Then we can talk. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to know. 
Uh, but they even called one of these groups and and said, "Do you know your data's out there? You got hit with ransomware," and and they literally said, uh, "We don't remember seeing any kind of ransomware, but we did have some IT problems that that got fixed back in March." Does that sound familiar to you, David? That sounds scarily familiar. <laughs> <laughs> It wouldn't be the first time that we heard wind of an MSP hiding a ransomware attack from their clients and their clients didn't know better. They just fixed it. Or, or a software company, maybe in big EHR company doing that. Yeah. Well, you know, and when you run an MSP, but we, we won't get into that. <laughs> Not uh, that I know anything about that, but. <laughs> no. But, uh, you know, a big MSP. <laughs> that works for anybody uh, could <laughs> have a ransomware attack. And if you don't know any better, they've set you up. Yes, they have. So if you've had it problems and they just it just fixed it, especially these days, you probably need to be asking some more questions mm -hmm. because that's, you, you know, ultimately the law says that is your responsibility. You can't yep. take the, oh, well, we have IT take care of everything, so we don't have responsibility. Yeah, because, I mean, just think about it. If if I had a breach or uh, let's say I had a vendor breach or I'm the vendor and I had a breach and it breached my, my healthcare clients, you know, if I was not going to work in a way that had integrity, so to speak, yeah. I would want to cover that up. I don't want to go to my clients and say, oh, yeah, we had a breach. And by the way, it affected you. And. And this uh -huh. is what it's going to end up costing you. And you got to report it and all this other stuff. Yeah, I can see where the IT company is like, fix it and be quiet. <laughs> Don't, shh, shh. <laughs> uh, not, not the way to do it, but I can see it being done, certainly. Well, and, and the other part of it is that once they do that, uh, keep it quiet and restore it, that, you know, if you don't ask, they aren't telling. And in some cases, the people hear it, but they don't get it because the IT people told them it was fine. Mm -hmm. And so for those who think you can just let IT handle it, this is what I say. If your company hired a bookkeeping company and you told them, here's my money, let me know if anything's wrong. Mm -hmm. Don't ask any questions. Just only deal with what they ask you to deal with. And if the IRS comes asking why you classified things, you say, I don't, I don't make any of those decisions. The bookkeeper does. My accountant does that. Mm -hmm. That, that is, that is not the way you run a business. So there you go. Which is a great segue into <laughs> our topic today, which is six steps for vendor management. And, uh, man, yes. Vendor management is one of those things that's so important and yet so overlooked. Yes. Or you got this, this one page BAA that you got somewhere <laughs> that you're handing out to vendors and calling it vendor management. I don't know. Not that I would know anything about that either. Just saying. No. <laughs> Right. Yeah, well, you know, and this is one of the ways for you to understand why we would be concerned if you had a single page BAA. Mm -hmm. This, this, this is what we're talking about here. Well, some people mis mistake the BAA as due diligence. Yeah, like they signed a BAA. It, well, technically, that's, that's what the law requires. Yeah, is that that is a way for you to get the confirmation. Yeah. Kind of, but, <laughs> but that's kind of like saying, you know, I will let you take all of my money and do whatever you want to with it and just trust you. It's the same concept. It's the same thing as when you're a parent and you ask your kids, did you do your homework? Yes. <laughs> Can I see it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's exactly it, dad. <laughs> soon to be grandpa yuck, oh, yuck, yuck. No. yeah that's the best thing i'm gonna have fun uh, we didn't even have a dog in the eight to paper they do homework all the time <laughs> <laughs> so what we have is you know we we talked about this when the first version came out 
and it's hick scrim you know we got hick up hick ticker hick yeah so this is just another one it's not from our 405d group it's a different group under the healthcare cybersecurity folks but it is supply chain risk management for healthcare and the original version made clear that we put this out to help small and medium vendors their small and medium organizations manage their vendors and they released version two in 2020 and it added things it didn't change anything it added more things to help you know more medium and large on the higher end as well as some uh, additional information for everybody else and we we have a link of course to the hick scrim and you add the i to get the scrim <laughs> But um, it's, it's really handy. It does, you know, if you don't just glance at it and you actually read it, it will provide fantastic information. Um, one of the things that it does is it helps kind of take you through what is the overall thing you're supposed to achieve and then a deep dive into certain parts of it. And it includes templates and example policies and procedures and even notes on contracts. So, excellent day. It's very good information. And the first thing it does, it, it goes through the NIST cybersecurity framework has a section on supply chain. And they thought, huh, how about we use that instead of making up a new one? So let's do the NIST cybersecurity framework requirements, which is a great idea. Mm -hmm. I thought that's what I would do if I were new. <laughs> <laughs> so it starts with, uh, you know, it goes through meeting the requirement for uh, supply chain one, and it goes all the way through all of the different uh, NIST uh, CSF supply chain requirements. But the very first one actually takes you through the overview and there are six steps in it. And we're going to give you those six steps in a really broader sense of what's in there that you would do to create a true vendor management program. And then the details to actually accomplish it and examples and everything else are in the Hickscrim document. So even if you think you're managing your vendors, I suggest that you evaluate this because it wouldn't be the first time that we found somebody that thought they were doing everything they were supposed to, thought they were protected and were not. And, 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 and they is, were probably running for office at the same time. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> but it is New Jersey. I'll leave it at that. That's right, Jerry. I said it. I was uh, fixing to say you'll get a call about that one. <laughs> Uh, that's, but, that's, where, that's where the Utes live. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to hear from him on that one. But uh, <laughs> when when we look at that uh, concept of what it is that you need to do to manage vendors today, it does give me a sense of satisfaction of having all the people yelling at me for years because of the questions I was asking, nobody else has this. <laughs> Hello, y you got it coming out of the woodworks now. I told you, you might as well get ready. Mm -hmm. I'm always ahead of the curve. Double Just D even told y'all. <laughs> <laughs> D, <laughs> knock me down and steal my teeth. <laughs> Double D done told y'all that. All right. So, You see people start making that their password phrase. Not me <laughs> down and steal my teeth. <laughs> Exclamation point. <laughs> uh -huh. Two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Double D. <laughs> All right. So uh, we, we, we desire to see that on the most used password list. No, we don't. That's funny. All um, right. So, so step one. Uh you define in the broader context of overall business risk where supply chain cyber risk, <clears throat> excuse me, and how it applies to 
where all the places it could impact these areas. Mm -hmm. This is one of the things we, we really open some eyes when we're talking with business owners, business leaders, to get them to understand how many areas that cyber impacts your business. So let's just hit them real quick. All right. So the first one is operational risk, yeah. which I think people tend to understand, you know, it's your day-to-day operations. Which stuff don't work. <laughs> yeah. Your day-to-day is messed up. Let's just go with that. And, and Everybody's and proud that I said messed up. <laughs> <laughs> the, the next one is what, the one we harp on a lot, mm-hmm. which is the safety risk. So patient care, employee safety, contractor mm-hmm. safety. I mean, yeah. just safety, right? Right. Um, how about this one? Competitive risk. Yep. So the ability to achieve your, your goals, your intellectual property, your trade secrets, all those types of things are yeah, at risk. Because all the resources that you would have used to, you know, open that new uh, office or, uh, you know, offer a new service, hire a new per. those are getting diverted mm-hmm. completely. It's going to knock you completely off your game. Yeah. Which is, you know, what everybody experienced in 2020. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so no, right. All of our At goals went out the window. Yeah. Just all, it's, yeah. Anyway, so the next one is quality risk. So your products, your services, uh, your business practices, you know, everything that has to have a, a quality or quality control. And, mm-hmm. and those things are at risk. Uh, mm-hmm. here's, here's another one. We talk about this one often, especially when it comes to a breach, which is reputational risk. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to lose customers, which means you're losing money. You could lose your business partners, your public confidence, um, you know, like how you're perceived. Perceived image. Yeah, how you're perceived in the community. Yeah. We <laughs> counted kind of on you. Mm-hmm. And, and we talk about that a lot. And I don't think people understand how much it impacts you until this happened. And those of you who are hiding things, <laughs> hope to sell. Yeah. Okay. Pants on the ground, pants on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go on. Uh, the next one is compliance risk. So, you know, your losses and legal penalties for failure to comply with laws and regulations, which, you know, that's kind of what everybody thinks of when you say HIPAA, even though we go, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a no. small, small part of it. It's about patient care. You notice how far down it is on the list of things to be concerned about. Yeah. That's what I always say. That's the last thing you have to worry about. There's all these others. Yep. Uh, the next one is secondary risk or, you know, the transfer of risk to business partners. So, you know, yeah. avoiding risk, reducing risk, transferring risk. So if I think I'm going to hand it over to my partner and then my partner screws the pooch, it's coming back to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's a big part that I think people don't realize, especially about the IT side is mm-hmm. the whole argument that I hired an IT company to take care of this doesn't, you know, absolve you from your responsibility. No, not at all. Nope. And then the last one, geopolitical. Yeah. Big words. Yeah. Um, yeah. So political instability, trade barriers, taxes, the economic stuff. I mean, yeah, kind of the big world view. Because, <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, you know, we're not I don't think anybody really is in a local economy anymore. Even if you're a small local business, you are participating in a global economy. And so look at, look at what the chip shortage is doing. Dude, don't even talk about the chip shortage. Uh, I had a terrible time trying to help my son buy a used car this week. That, I mean, (laughs) seriously, and that's all I heard. Everything. All I heard from everybody, chip shortage, chip shortage, chip shortage. Mm-hmm. Car, used cars are they're bringing sometimes more than book value <laughs> and people are paying it there's a car lot here in town it's an it's a it's a new and used car lot they had six new cars <laughs> on an on a and i'm talking about a small car lot i'm talking about like a dealership car lot oh, wow wow six new cars <laughs> everything else is used oh, they can't wow. get new cars so, ah, mm. 
All right. So you take those and you evaluate which ones are going to matter to you, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then you get to step two and you figure out who's going to be responsible for all of these kinds of things in your business. Cause a bigger business, they could spread that risk out a little bit and different people are handling different things that we just talked about, you know, the reputational yeah. versus the compliance versus smaller business. Like, you, you know, our micro business <laughs> buck stops here, buddy. Yeah. Air thing. And some of you are listening going, well, crap, I got to do all this. <laughs> yeah. We feel your pain. We do. <laughs> we feel your pain. But they do make a very good point here, and they tell you in this step, remind, remind you rather, ultimately, supply chain cybersecurity is a business risk and not a technology risk. Amen. You know, it is not something that you throw technology at and you're okay. You can't yeah. do that. But it's also something that you shouldn't be handing over to the technology people in your business to solve. Right. Exactly. <laughs> important. Hugely important. Yeah, you know, yeah, IT I see handles that. all the vendors. No. Yeah. Well, you know, and we come out and say. Don't we do leave vendors. them out either. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, we do IT vendor management, right? Mm-hmm. But we do it. So when we do third-party IT vendor management, at least in my company, what we're saying is that we will we will be the liaison between you and that vendor to help with support issues and stuff like that. So, you know, we'll get on the phone with mm. this software vendor, for example, and fix whatever needs to be fixed. And that way you're not tying your staff up and, and we understand what they're saying and all that. What it doesn't mean is that we're doing these things. That's not vendor managed we're talking about. This is another one of those times where you're using the same terminology to mean something very different. <laughs> but if you've got a, a company that has a CIO, they should be part of the conversation, but you don't hand this over to the CIO and say, uh, this is cybersecurity. It's, it's in your boat. Go vet yeah. our vendors. No, there's a lot of layers involved. Yep. All right. So I got to get moving. Step three, make, a, make list. a list, <laughs> check it twice. <laughs> Yeah, everybody that wants to uh, come around and say, where's the, the list of stuff we have to do for HIPAA? Well, here you go. Make it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> make, make this list. This is yep. important. You got to get everybody. Yeah. Anybody, a vendor. So you don't want to find just the ones that have to do, uh, oh, well, we've we've got all of our HIPAA vendors taken care of. Don't mm-hmm. have to worry about the others. Really? Because yeah. very rarely do we do an audit of anybody that we don't find somebody that should have a BAA and does. Right. Well, I like the way you guys handle this. Um, and I probably shouldn't tell people your secret, but (laughs) secret sauce, (laughs) you, you tell people to, um, go and pull your accounts payable. Mm -hmm. That's a great way of figuring out who your vendors are, because oftentimes when you say who are your vendors, you get a small list. And then when you're like, okay, now let's compare this to who you're paying. And now Mm -hmm. the list grows by, you know, 10 X. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Oh, you got a lot of vendors you didn't think about. And so that's what you have to do. Create that list. And then now I have a list. I got my, I, I know all the risks that I need to worry about and all the areas that I have vendors that I need to keep an eye on. Now I got to decide, well, how am I going to keep an eye on? Mm-hmm. And so the guide does a great thing. It says, okay, here are the metrics that you want to consider evaluating whether or not your program's working. And then you write your policies to that. Yep. I thought, you know, it's good. Um, And so it's everything from the risk level or the business impact to how are they doing on current assessments? Do they have open items? Is the contract good? Uh, do we have uh, assessments going back for a while with them? You know, those kinds of things. Those are the things you want to decide what matters for you to know. And then mm-hmm. once you do that, you start writing policies about it. But guess what? The guide has templates. It has examples. <laughs> good enough. It's examples. Get you so started. It's pretty interesting. Uh, they even have a template 
for making your list and rating them with some really cool formulas in it. And in fact, you know, we'll probably start telling people, Hey, use this. It's, it's freely available, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of thing. But th there's one out there that one of the universities created and you just have to keep their copyright in it and you can use it. It's really, really good work. I love spreadsheet nerds. <laughs> So, but that lets you score everybody, set their risk level. And now we're at step five. Now, you know, everything. Now it's just set up a plan for making your policies and procedures work. Mm -hmm. How often are you going to assess? How are you going to determine the risk? What answers do you want to ask? Uh, question <laughs> 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 what questions do you want to get and what answers are you going to worry about and how do you deal with it when they don't answer what you're expecting or what you want to see are you going to give them time to fix it guess what also in the guide <laughs> but da -da -da. and then i'm sorry i'm in a rush but i'm in a rush Number six, <laughs> putting it all together. <laughs> but I do. Yeah, that's this one. We look at the the trifecta that we always talk about: people, process, and technology. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but you know, Hicksgram breaks it down a little bit more. Four parts. So they talk about the people, which is you know who's going to do what and when. The processes, you know, how it's going to be done, how it's going to be documented. They say tools and control. So tools being how are you going to accomplish those tasks? And then control is how are you going to monitor it and make sure that it's happening? So, so there they, you yeah, go. They break the technology piece down into tools and controls. Yep. There you go. So they have and a four legged exactly table. It. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> See, if, and, and you want all the legs still to be the same length. Yep. Uh, but once you get through that, and again, that's like the big overview. That says, if I do all of those steps, I actually have a program, which is step number one of, or definition of uh, the supply chain management is to actually have a program. Mm -hmm. And that's how you know. But then they have steps two, three, and four that are also in there that do the deep dive, that take you into, uh, you know, prioritizing your suppliers and, and, and how you figure out those risks, filling out that form. Once you pull your AP and your 1099s and all that, uh, and then contracts and all of you who don't like signing your BAAs, you should learn what they're recommending should be in your vendor contracts because it includes things like committing to, the hiccup 10 practices to address the five threats. Mm -hmm. And there are some other very specific recommendations to consider for all of your contracts based on the type of vendor and the risk of vendor. It is very good. So note to self, everybody, if you think the contracts are just paperwork, it's fitting to get real interesting for you. <laughs> yeah yeah and then the last part is routinely assessing and it does give you a an assessment and we actually i just took the hick scrim assessment and built it into uh our comply assistant tool so now you know if you you have the tool you can send that out and, and then we have now the cybersecurity Hickscrim version and then the HIPAA version because you also have to make sure they're doing that. So it's all in there, though. It's in there. Mm -hmm. you know, go. Somebody, <laughs> <laughs> somebody tell me how to do this. It's in there. there so as I was so excited writing late at night, I said, <laughs> go get your Hickscrim. <laughs> 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 which you know david is my hick <laughs> i guess i'd rather be the hick than the scream <laughs> I, I guess right right <laughs> but the important thing to note is that if you go get this document you will learn a lot just by following it and it made me feel good when they put it out because it's pretty much exactly what our 
supply chain management program I already had in it. I just like the assessment they added because they had time to work that out mm -hmm. and that it follows Hiccup. So, and this cybersecurity framework. <gasps> Wait, yeah. aren't those recognized security practices? <gasps> Shh. <gasps> Say it ain't so. <laughs> All right, uh, folks. Just, just do what we say. You'll thank us later. It's going to be my new tagline. Do what I say. You'll thank me later. Yeah. Thank <laughs> me with a review. That's what he says. Yeah. Thank me with a review. All right, folks. That's our show for today. Remember to follow us and share us out. Leave a review for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, always, you're wrong. Thank you so much. And remember, for Donna and myself, HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. <laughs>